Hello everybody, this video is going to be about a basic introduction to the repeat miner and some basics about the machine learning. So basically I'm going to use an Excel file or a CSV file. I'm going to talk about how you can create a data set uh, by your own. And then I'm going to use this data set in repeat miner for the classification purposes. And then I'm going to cover some basic classification algorithms like KNN, Naubez or decision trees. And then I'm going to cover the K-fold cross validation. So basically I'm going to start with creating a new Excel file holding my data set. So you can use any spreadsheet program by the way, or you can even create a CSV file by using Notepad or any text editor. I'm going to talk about their details. And the problem I'm going to try to solve today is the classification of male and female. And I'm going to use the metric system that I'm used to, and I'm going to use weight and height dimensions for any person, and then uh, gender or male or female classification in here. And for the weight issue, let's give some ideas like uh, 180 centimeters and the uh, sorry the weight is let's say 80 kilo kilograms and 180 for the height or you can go for I will just go with the random values in here so basically I have 12 rows in here you can create a bigger data set if you want you can even add some more data sets data uh, data attributes in here as a column so you after you have created a data set I'm going to save this file to somewhere I can find later on so let's save it as workbook 2 and I'm going to use Excel SX which is the Excel format or you can go with the CSV format in here that's all up to you and then after saving this file let's say workbook 2 I'm going to load this data in Rapid Miner. so when you first open the Rapid Miner, it's going to be a splash screen like this and I'm going to start with a blank blank uh, process and here you you can see an add data button so when you click on this button two options in here you can either load a data set from your computer or a press store database so I'm gonna go with the, in my computer option in here and under the documents uh, probably I can find with the last modified in here so we have the workbook to XLX in here so you can just uh, point your file later saved and then you can go with the next so at that step you are just indicating the data set you want to load into the repeat miner so basically you can just limit the data set with some rows or some columns in here but I'm gonna go with the full data set so all the data I have created is gonna be used in repeat miner for the classification purposes and I go with the next step and in this step this is an important step by the way for the loading the uh, data set uh, you define the types of the attributes in here so the weight attribute and the height attribute is is automatically defined as integer by repeat miner so if you want to change them you can change in, in this step or in here male or female classification labels are uh, determined as polynomial but actually we have two types of labels in here not the third one so I'm gonna change it from binomial sorry from polynomial to the binomial because we only have two classes in here okay so one more time because of the video recording in here probably it's not working so let's change it to binomial. Okay, now it's binomial. Uh, and another important thing you need to handle at that step is uh, changing the label. So basically, the purpose of this data set is labeling the person with the male or female labels in here. So I can change it by change type in here, sorry, change role in here, and then I'm gonna set the role of this column to label. When I click on okay, you see it's highlighted in green color. So basically these two attributes are loaded and then the third attribute in here is going to be the label and we are going to use these two attributes to determine if a person is a male or female labeled now i can click on next and at that step i'm just giving a name to the data set so i'm giving like female dash male so it's going to be the name of the file in this uh, data set and it's loaded in repeat miner so i can see whole data that uh, what i created in excel in the repeat miner okay so the excel data in the uh, in here is loaded to the repeat miner successfully now you can start testing this for example you can just drag and drop into the process screen in here from the data sets in here and then you can directly connect this data set to the output and when you click on the process uh, uh, on the run button in here you are going to see the data set is loaded as a result set in here Okay, so this is the first step you need to handle in order to deal with data. Actually, there are some other alternative ways, so you can access data by using data access uh, nodes in here, and then you can point an Excel file or another file, and then you can load the data through this process, but that's what I suggest you for most of the cases, much more useful 
for uh, the data loading into the Rapid Miner. Now, we are going to start with a basic process to classify the data for me, uh, male and female uh, genders. So I'm going to start with split data. So split data is basically splitting data into the given portions. So I'm going to uh, create the training and the test sets through this data. So basically the training set is used for machine learning purposes, for training the machine learning algorithm, and the test set is used for testing the uh, the machine learning success rate. So I'm going to load this. I mean, I, I will just connect this data loading node to the splitting node so I can split the uh, data into two portions. There is an edit enumerator button in here. When you click in this button, you see there's no ratios defined in here. So when I click in add entry or one more time add entry, so I can have two data portions created by the split data node in here. And I, I will just give the portion ratio. So for example, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 means that I'm going to split the data into two portions and the 70% is going to flow through the first portion and the 30% is going to flow through the second portion. Okay, So basically we split data into two and the first portion is going to be the 70% of the original data. So basically if we have, how many rows do we have in the Excel file? Let's go back to here. So the first row is for the headers. So we only have 12 rows in this case. So 70 will make about 78.4 so probably eight data is going to be loaded for the training purpose and the rest which means four data is going to be loaded for the test purposes and you can also define some other ratios in here or you can even define a third or fourth split data portions in here but the summation should be one otherwise the data cannot for example you cannot create a data set for uh, which the summation is about five or six or other things so this is the portions i mean the summation should be one maximum uh, okay, if I click on OK, then this data is created. And then one thing you need to be careful about in here is you can go for the sampling algorithms in here. So basically linear sampling means that you are going to split the data into the two portions. And the first portion, whatever the first portion is, I mean, the first 70% of this data is going to be loaded for training and the rest 30% is going to be loaded for the testing purposes. So there will be no change. So for example, in the test cases, you see in this data set, we only have male gender. So we will not be able to test the success of female. So that's not a good idea for the data set we have in here. So basically, uh, you can go for shuffled sampling. Shuffled sampling is just shuffling the data set and then uh, just mixing the data set and then just getting the 70% to 30% split over this shuffled data set. Or you can go for the stratified sampling. In the shuffle sampling, we cannot guarantee what will happen after the shuffle because it's just a randomizing algorithm. But if you go for the stratified sampling, stratified sampling is guaranteeing that you will have the same ratio for the female and male labels on the train and the test sets. Okay, so it's a little bit more uh, intelligent algorithms that we can use for most of the cases. And then after the split, split data in here, I have two portions which is going to flow through the split data in here. Uh, I will use a machine learning algorithm. So the basic algorithm I'm going to use today is the KNN algorithm, K nearest neighbor root. I will not explain the details, so you can find many other videos or you can even read the uh, property details in here. But basically KNN is a machine learning algorithm which is useful for the classification. And I'm going to use this box in here. And furthermore, I'm going to apply this model and then see the success rate of this KNN algorithm over the test data. So the first portion, the 70% is flowing to the training purposes, to the machine learning algorithm for the training purposes. And the second portion, which is the test portion, is going to flow to the apply model in here. And I'm going to apply the KNN model, which is trained in this step, to the test data in here. So basically, I'm splitting data into two. The training portion is going to the KNN algorithm, and a machine learning algorithm is executed in here. And the machine learning algorithm, which is a, a which is a running algorithm on the uh, created from the training set, is going to be applied to the test set in here. Okay, and then you can just go with the label in here, so you can see the uh, predicted and actual data. So if you click on play or the run button in here, so you see this 30%. So it's about 30% is three samples in this case. So 12, the 30% of 12 is accepted as three. So you see the uh, three samples in here are classified. So these are the actual data, the first column in here. These are the predicted data. So originally a female is 
classified as male in here. A male is classified as a male here, which is a success. And uh, for the rest two rows, we have an error. That might happen because we only provided some random data in this step, so that might happen. Don't worry for this. But uh, also, this might be might be related with the KNN algorithm in here. But basically, we have applied the model using the uh, split data KNN and apply model. So this is a basic setup in RapidMiner for the classification purposes. Furthermore, you can uh, also add performance for the classification. So performance classification, I'm just putting it into the flow over the apply model and here you can connect it later on. But performance is a node useful for getting some statistics on the data. So what happens in here is when I run the set, you see the true one is classified in here and you can see the false ones in here. So this is called as the confusion matrix. And in this confusion matrix, the diagonal gives the correctly classified samples and the rest of the uh, matrix, I mean, the data which is not on the diagonal is an error for all case. So this is much more useful because, you know, uh, we can get the labels, but if you have thousands or millions of data set, then it's not easy to understand how many mistakes you have, how many errors you have, how many correctly classified samples you have. So it's just displaying all the samples in a confusion matrix in here so you can see them at a glance, uh, uh, by, uh, I mean, easily. Uh, so let's see how, how can we modify the machine learning algorithm in here. So basically the KNN algorithm has some details like the number of K value or some other details in here. But if you want to replace it with naive Bayes, let's say I want to use naive Bayes, not the kernel version, the naive Bayes version. So basically what I need to do is connect this training set flow to the naive Bayes and then the model output to the apply model in here. And then I'm going to remove the KNN in here and test the success rate of naive Bayes. And when you run, we have the similar uh, picture in here. So nothing is changed. I mean, this might also be related with the data set. So if the data set is buggy somehow, Naibayas has no effect on it. Or you can even use some decision tree. Let's use decision tree instead of Naibayas. And then I'm going to connect this training set to here, model to the apply model, and the test data to the unlabeled data for the uh, apply model. And if you run, you see decision tree has a better success. So the accuracy in here is 66%, which means two of the uh, three samples are correctly classified. So that's a better picture in this uh, output. So decision tree can be used for these purposes also. Or you can even use neural networks. So let's go with the neural network in here. So I'm going to use training data in here, model in here, and then I'm going to run this on the neural network in here. Again, we have 66% accuracy. That's a better output than the first two algorithms we have tested. So what you can do here is just basically replace the algorithm. Maybe you can play with the details of the properties of the algorithm, and then you can test the success rate of this algorithm. And one thing more you can do for basic setup is k-fold cross-validation. So what you can do is I'm going to remo remove all the things in here except the data loading node. And then I'm going to use the validation in here Basically, it's the cross-validation. So cross-validation is a box holding two sub-boxes, sub-regions. So I'm flowing the data to the cross-validation. And if you see the icon in here, which is a tree icon in here, uh, this means this, this is a complex box and you can get inside of it by double-clicking. So what I do here is double-clicking in this box and you see we have two regions in here. And basically, you can turn back to your process by clicking the process over here. So it's just getting inside the box and going back to the overall process view. And when you get in this uh, box, you have two regions, the training region and the testing region. So the cross-validation box is splitting data into the train and test sets automatically. And in here, in the training, you will provide a machine learning algorithm. So we can go with the KNN algorithm one more time in here. So training data is going to flow to the KNN box in here. And the model learned from the KNN algorithm is going to be the output of the training region. And then I'm going to test this data, test this machine learning algorithm with the unlabeled data. So I'm going to use apply data, apply model in the testing phase. And I'm flowing the model in here and the test data, which is split by the cross-validation box. So cross-validation box is automatically um, splitting data into two with the tests and training sets. And in here, the test set is automatically provided by the cross-validation box. And it's going to be applied to the machine learning algorithm, which we created in this step. And finally, we can use the performance one more time for the classification purposes. So I'm going to get the label in here and then output the performance to the performance output in here. 
So all the things are set in the cross-validation box, but I can also get this to the result set in here, the output of the process, the overall process. Okay, so one more time, I have covered these issues in the classes, but cross-validation algorithm is basically working with the uh, with a split. So if you have 10 folds in here, which means you are going to split the data into 10 equal pieces, and then for each iteration, one piece of this data is going to be used for test, the rest is going to be used for training, and then the test data portion is going to be split for each fold. So it's going to run 10 times, and <clears throat> for each, uh, each run, it's going to split data into train and test with the given percentages in here. So basically, all the data set is going to be used for test and training purposes. So if you run, you see the summation of the data in here is 12, which is the original data set we have in here. So all the 12 data set is used for test purposes, and four of them is correctly classified, and unfortunately, the eight of them is misclassified or not correctly classified in the diagon. So they are outside of the diagon in here, and you see the accuracy is 30%. So you can play with the machine learning algorithm, you can replace it, you can change the parameters in here, so you can try to find a better machine learning algorithm with replacing the machine learning algorithm in here or the details in here. Basically that's all I want to cover for the repeat miner and the machine learning algorithm. So if you have some experience in machine learning, if you know these algorithms, the details of algorithms, the techniques, the splitting or cross-validation or other things, so it's just a fast startup for the introduction to the repeat miner if you have some experiences in the machine learning in other environments like R programming. Okay, I wish you best.